Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Japus, joining you for another teaching and learning session. This time around, we're going to talk about our pointers for the next generation NCLEX. And this is supposed to be pointers number 21. So I'll be sharing with you important topics that I'd like you to focus on as you prepare yourself for that one great test that would allow you to practice nursing in the United States. So here we go. Before we get to start, I'd like to ask you to join our thousands of passers worldwide and may you be next in line. So we'd like to first congratulate Maria Inchona A. Cortazar, USRN from Medici de Makati College, or who passed the Northern Mariana Islands Board of Nursing last August 15, 2023. And let's learn from what she has to say. So I remember this lady, I saw her in our simulation room and according to my staff, it has taken her two years before passing the NCLEX and she went through a lot of different test preparations program, but she ended up just attending my three-day quick fix and she passed the test. So here's her story. Marami na akong kakilala na nakapasa ng NCLEX, pero ako, pang ilan ko na wala pa rin. So she's saying that she has a lot of acquaintances who took and passed the NCLEX, but on her end, it has been quite a while and several times already, and she has yet to pass. Sinasabi nga nila sa akin, mag-try na lang ako sa iba at wag sa US kasi di naman daw ako makapasa. So some people are telling her to try for some other country other than the US because she is not able to pass the test. Nag-pray ako kay God na sana sa tamang panahon makapasa na ako. So she prayed to God and she prayed that may she be able to pass in his perfect time. Sumikat yung kanta ng SB19 na ginto, nagustuhan ko yung meaning ng kanta nila at nalaman ko din mga life stories nilang lahat at na-inspire ako kasi kahit na marami silang pinagdaanan na pagsubok, hindi sila sumuko. So, she heard about a new boy band song that became popular and it's about an insp their inspirational journey and that inspired her to proceed further. Ang ginawa ko, nag-self-study ako sa bahay. So she actually engaged in self-study. Naisip ko sana may review na sandali lang. And then she thought about um, a review program that could potentially just give her just enough time, a, a short course. Okay? And since nag-alaga ako ng anak ko, and that's because she's taking care of her child. Tapos, habang browse ako sa Facebook, nakita ko yung Tracer Gapos na 3 Days Quick Fix. So while she was browsing Facebook, she saw the 3 Day Quick Fix, okay? And she enrolled. Sabi sa amin ni Sir, wag magmadali sumagot sa exam. Tapos ako naman, naalala ko, line ni Ken sa Gento, no rush, I can do this all day. Umiyak ako after ng exam kasi 85 items lang. So she cried because it just took her 85 items in her test. Naisip ko si God na ang bahala. So I leave it all to God. Kung sa tingin ni God, ito na yung time para maging USRN. Alam ko, ibibigay na ni God sa akin. If God thinks that this is my time, He'll give it to me. Yung akala ko sa walang, na walang pag-asa, na una na ang pag-iyak ko at na magana eyes ko, kakaiyak habang naghihintay ng result. So her eyes actually swelled with tears while she was waiting for the results. Para at least pag lumabas na result, okay na ako. Sabi ko, okay lang kahit anong result. Tatanggapin ko at hindi ako susuko kahit anong mangyari. So whatever the result would be, I would accept it and I would not give up. Whatever happens. Nagpray muna ako kay God bago ko makita result ko. Nung nakita ko na nakapasa ko, hindi ako makapaniwala. So I, st I initially prayed before I opened my result and when I saw my result, I just can't believe it. After two years, at ilang beses na pag-try ko, so after several tries within two years, sa wakas ito na yung God's perfect timing. Nawala lahat ng pagod at hirap, mga masasakit na salita na sinabi ng mga tao sa paligid ko. Pero sabi ko nga, kilala ko sarili ko, alam ko na kaya ko, alam ko na dadating yung time na ibibigay ng God sa akin. Sobrang nasaktan ako every time na di ako makapasa. So I know it will happen in God's perfect time. I get so hurt every time I am unable to pass. But every time after I fail, I make it a point that I never stop and I never gave up. That's what she says. Kasi kung sumuko ako, hindi ko mararating yung pangarap ko. Kailangan talaga samahan ng dasal at focus sa pag-aaral. So you need to have 
time to study and at the same time, time to pray when you prepare for the test. Una sa po sa lahat, nagpapasalamat po ako kay God. So I thank God dahil nakapasa na po ako this time because I passed. And thank you so much, Dr. Ray Gapos, for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you din sa lahat po ng mga staff, lalo na kay Ma'am Joanne. Miss Joanne is really the Miss Friendship of our team. Na sobrang bait po at nag-encourage po sa akin na bumalik at mag-review pa po ng course sa RA Gapos office. Thank you din po sa family ko na nandyan po palagi para sa akin, Maria Inchone A. Cortazar, USRN. So, she took the quick fix. That's just three days and the core shells. That's her winning recipe. I hope you will also imitate what she did. Okay. So, here we go for our NGN pointers number 21. So, the first thing that I'd like to highlight is know what to study. So, the topics that you need to study should be coming from an expert who knows the ins and outs of the test, not the false prophets of NCLEX exam, okay? So here's the first that I'd like to talk about. That's rhabdomyolysis. Now, in a nutshell, in simple terms, this is actually damaged muscles. And when there's a damage in your muscles, what happens would be it would release proteins and electrolytes to the blood and the blood gets filtered by the kidneys. So eventually this could potentially lead to damage to the kidneys and the heart. So this is a medical emergency. It's potentially fatal. The question is, what is a common risk factor? Two things. So one, it could be the presence of a very hot environment. Two, trauma to the muscle. And the trauma to the muscle could be brought about by occupational hazards. Like for example, if you'll be asked which specific client is most at risk to rhabdomyolysis, then you can answer the firefighters, especially those that fought the fire in the recent calamity in Hawaii. So they could be very, very at risk to rhabdomyolysis because of their task and because of the hot environment. Now, this could also be associated with substance abuse, like um, the use of cocaine. And of course, if your patient's taking antipsychotics and all of a sudden they experience neuroleptic malignant syndrome, we know for a fact that neuroleptic malignant syndrome is uh, manifested by high fever, muscle rigidity, and diaphoresis. The muscle rigidity could potentially lead to muscle damage. So what would what group of symptoms would tell us that the client has rhabdomyolysis? So the first one, you have fever, and then an increase in your um, myoglobin or creatinine kinase. And then definitely the patient will have dehydration that gives rise to your dark urine and severe muscle pain, usually in the lower back and the lower extremities. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that since um, dehydration is one of the main manifestations of rhabdomyolysis, so you have to address that problem right away. So the priority intervention for a client with rhabdomyolysis should be hydration and instruct the client to avoid anything that could potentially lead to dehydration through polyuria, polyuria like for example, too much caffeine and too much alcohol, okay? So that those are the important things that you have to pay particular attention to when you're recalling concepts related to rhabdomyolysis. Now, the second concept that I'd like to highlight is actually variable deceleration of the fetal heart rate. Now, notice that we have here an image, an illustration. If you'll be asked in the test in which part of this strip or this picture should you check for deceleration should be on the upper part because the lower part represents your uterine contractions, your increment, acne, decrement, increment, acne, decrement, and so it goes the same pattern. So you would notice that there's a downsloping of the image on the upper part. So the downsloping indicates slowing of the heart rate. Okay, so if the slowing of the heart rate occurs before the peak of a contraction, and then it occurs again after the peak of another contraction, so it could come before the peak of a contraction or after the peak of another contraction. So this is called variable deceleration. Because if everything is the same, like the slowing of the fetal heart rate occurs before the peak of every contraction, that could be early deceleration. If it occurs 
towards the peak and the end of each and every contraction, then that's late deceleration. But in instances where you have a decreased heart rate before a contraction, and sometimes it occurs after a contraction within the same period of time, then you have what we call variable deceleration. So when you say deceleration, that's just a slowing of the fetal heart rate. And what could have caused this? Cord compression. Now, what's the complication of variable deceleration? This leads to fetal hypertension. So this, therefore, is a reportable situation. Because of the cord compression, there's a slowed fetal heart rate, there's a slow oxygenation of the fetus. And so the priority would be to position the mother to the left lateral recumbent, then administer oxygen. And of course, if the mom is under oxytocin, you need to stop the oxytocin. So remember, variable deceleration indicates cord compression, and it is something that you need to report. To compare that to early deceleration, early deceleration indicates uh, head compression, and that is something that just needed to be documented that it occurred, but it doesn't need any special intervention. Unlike your variable deceleration, which needs to be reported because cord compression could diminish the oxygen supply of the fetus. And so therefore, you need to report this to the healthcare provider. Okay, so let's move on now. The third, baclofen. Okay, baclofen is a drug that's used to relax the muscles. So this is given in clients with muscle spasticity. So it's given in patients with Parkinson's disease, with multiple sclerosis, with spinal cord injury. And since it's a muscle relaxant, the primary effect is it decreases muscle spasm. Now, can it decrease pain? Yes, but it decreases pain that is due to muscle spasm. So other than that, it doesn't have any direct analgesic effect. So it decreases muscle spasm, therefore decreasing muscle pain. So the common side effects, remember NVD, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, plus dizziness. And whenever a patient's receiving baclofen, you will have to instruct your patient to avoid drinking alcohol or opioids or taking it with benzodiazepine because if given in combination, this could lead to respiratory depression, which can potentially um, make it difficult for the patient to breathe. So therefore, if your patient's taking baclofen and the patient's taking benzodiazepine, you have to clarify it with the physician before proceeding and giving the medication, okay? So the second thing that I'd like to highlight is how are you supposed to study for the NGM? You need to study with technology. It can't be that you're using paper-based materials only. So let me share with you our unique tools here at the Ray Gapo system. We have our own set of technology. And this is one of the feedback. Hi, Sir Ray. PM view po para mag-thank you po sa inyo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa help nyo to achieve this American dream. So she's practically just saying thank you. Salamat po. Malaki po ang impact nyo talaga sa aming mga nurses. So she's saying we have great impact on nurses. Malaking blessing po kayo sa amin. Salamat po ulit sa USRN na po ako. So I said, congratulations. And I asked her, what helped you pass NGN? And she says, honestly, the functional concept and the syndromic approach po talaga yung malaki yung naitulong. And yung three days quick fix is very life-changing. The quick fix is a free session. It's face-to-face. -face. I do it uh, live, either virtual or face-to-face -face in the classroom. But you have to reserve ahead of time because slots are limited only to 35, okay? So I'm doing it every month. So please join me in my next session. Give us a call to find out our, about our schedule, okay? And this is actually the core shell that she's actually sharing. Our core shells cover all the topics on the NCLEX and you can open it anytime, anywhere. You can watch videos, do exams, and the exams are of different types. You can do just plain NGN. You can do the standard multiple choice and you can do short and long ones, okay? And of course, the third and the most important, you have to be in a conducive environment. So this is our NCLEX RN simulation room and of course, our very, very conducive class, okay? So let me see you in our next session and let's find out what can we do to help you achieve 
those four letters after your name, USRN. So once again, I'd like to invite you to join our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. So it's your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank plus three books, okay? NGN strategies and sample questions and quick fix sessions. The fee starts at 3,499. I'll see you at the Ray Gapos building here in UN Avenue, Manila. This has been your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapos saying, I'll see you in my next class because you're the next USRN. Thank you and see you in my next Pointers video.